This video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on accounting for branches, dependent branch data system. This is a theory lecture. In this lecture, I am not going to solve any sum, but my intention is to explain you the dependent branch data system accounting, how the accounting is done in case of dependent branch in a data system. Observe on the screen. See, branch accounting, this is a theory lecture. Now the first question that arises, what is branch? Look at various divisions of the business located at a place other than the main place of business that is head office is known as branch. So branch and head office, operating activity or other activity done for the business is under the common ownership. But the location of activity is different than the location of the main place of business that is head office. Say for example, Mumbai head office, whatever the business functions, purchase, sales, finance, administration, personal management, all those functions perform for a common ownership of a, for one owner, under one ownership of a business. But some of the functions are performed at a location other than Mumbai, means Ahmedabad branch. Similarly, a location other than Bombay, Baroda branch. Location other than Bombay, Rajkot branch. So these are the branches. So far as the activities, business activities are concerned, all those activities are conducted under one ownership. But the location for doing the activities are different. That's why they are known as branches. Now let me talk about Bombay has a branch at Ahmedabad. Now the question arises. Ahmedabad activities, Bombay head office activities, business activities are in one ownership. Branch is not a person other than head office. So far as the legal entity is concerned, it is one. But from accounting point of view, from the accounting entity point of view, you can say that Mumbai head office and Ahmedabad branch are separate persons. Now separate persons for what time duration? Whenever the financial statements at the end of the year are reported, can head office say that amount due from Ahmedabad branch, say 5 lakhs rupees? Now, Bombay head office cannot say that the amount recoverable from Ahmedabad branch, because Ahmedabad branch and the Bombay branch, Bombay head office has the one legal entity, so I can't say or I can't record in my books of accounts that amount due from myself. So at the end of the year, when are you, whenever you are reporting the financial statement, in your financial statement, there cannot be any amount due from your branch or any amount payable to your branch. That situation can never be reported because all the activities are under one common legal entity. Legal entity. So whatever the activities conducted by the branch during the year, all those activities and the outcome of those activities in terms of assets and liabilities has to be assumed by head office and reported in its financial report as if they are the activity of the head office in itself. So whatever the separate identity of Mumbai and Ahmedabad branch is just transitory 
during the accounting period but at the end of the accounting period bombay head office mumbai head office cannot say that amount due from ahmedabad branch or obligation towards baroda branch no cannot be reported because it is one legal entity i am not i cannot be i cannot write in my books of accounts that i am obliged to pay myself 3 lakhs rupees i cannot write in my books of accounts i have got a right to receive 5 lakhs rupees from myself so branch account balance can never be reported in the balance sheet at the end at the end that's the most important point that we should understand before we proceed with branch accounting now so the separate existence can be identified in the books of accounts during the year now during the year whatever the transaction takes place the effect of those transaction at the end of the year and those effect of transaction is in the form of assets and liabilities and all the assets and liabilities of the branch is to be assumed by the head office now let us understand for a while under data system that head office and branch are separate persons during the year not at the end of the year so there is no separate existence of the branch at the end of the year so the existence of the branch is absorbed in the head office at the end of the year so at the beginning of the next year the branch has to be created so under data system what is the scenario at the beginning of the year the accounting entity branch comes into existence and at the end of the year the accounting entity branch has to be absorbed by head office in its books of accounts and whatever the transaction occurs during the year are to be recorded in a in a in a branch account under data system now what what could be the transaction between head office and branch during the year head office send goods for sale head office sends asset for use head office send cash for expenses so what head office can send to the branch goods asset or cash or if it doesn't send it pays for it so head office pays for goods head office pays for assets purchased head office pays for expenses incurred by the branch so this is what head office can do for for the branch during the year now what branch can do for, what branch can do for the head office branch sends cash sales proceeds branch sends collection from debtors branch sends income received to the ho after deducting so all this cash sales proceeds collection from debtors income received is sent by branch to head office after deducting expenses paid by it if they are not paid directly by ho so if the expenses are not paid directly by ho so the expenses are paid by branch out of the cash proceeds out of the cash received either by by, by way of cash sales or collection from debtors from that expenses will be paid and the balance cash will be remitted by branch to ho so this is what branch can do so these are the branch sends to ho here ho sends to branch these are the two main transaction these two main transactions are required to be recorded considering branch as a separate entity now at the end of the year all assets and liabilities of the branch are absorbed in the books of ho as branch has no legal separate existence other than ho so outcome of this cash received cash remitted there will be a balance of cash goods sold to the customers amount recovered from the customers there may be a balance in debtors account so whatever the assets and liabilities left at the end of recording of all this transaction all those assets and liabilities are required to be assumed by head office or head office has to absorb the very economic existence of the branch at the end of the year and the economic existence is always identified by the net assets net assets means assets minus liability that is known as financial net financial value and that is the economic entity concept so economic entity is an entity with assets and liabilities and the net assets and all those net assets are absorbed by head office at the end of the year so at the end of the year this branch assets and liabilities are absorbed by 
बॉम्बे हेड ऑफिस सो बाय एब्सॉर्बन वॉट है इन द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट ऑफ बॉम्बे मुंबई हेड ऑफिस देर इज नो अमाउंट ड्यू फ्रॉम ब्रांच नो अमाउंट पेएबल टू ब्रांच बिकॉज इन माई बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट आई कैनॉट राइट अमाउंट ड्यू फ्रॉम माई सेल्फ अमाउंट माई ऑब्लिगेशन टूवर्ड्स माई सेल्फ एंड दिस इज हाउ एब्सॉर्बन टेक्स प्लेस दिस इज वॉट अकर्स इन डेटर सिस्टम रिमेम्बर वन थिंग नाउ एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द इयर वॉट इज टू बी डन द ब्रांच एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द इयर ऑल एसर्स एंड लाइबिलिटीज एब्सॉर्ब आर गिवन टू द ब्रांच टू गिव अ सेपरेट अकाउंटिंग एक्सिस्टेंस फॉर ट्रांजेक्शन ड्यूरिंग दर सो फॉर ट्रांजेक्शन ड्यूरिंग द इयर द इकोनॉमिक अकाउंटिंग एंटिटी नोन एज नोन एज ब्रांच for a short duration during the year is to be created so at the beginning of the year the branch comes into existence how branch comes into existence by giving assets and liabilities to the branch now branch has become a become an economic activity and this is how branch has come into existence once again enter into transaction with the branch during the year same as so sends goods for sale assets for use cash for expenses or as so pays for goods SOP, HO pays for assets purchased or HO pays for expenses incurred by the branch. Same way, branch sends cash sales proceeds, collection from debtors, income received to the income received to the HO after deducting the expenses expenses paid if they are not directly paid. So expenses paid are deducted from the proceeds if the expenses are not paid by HO. And same way, at the end of the accounting period, the branch has to be absorbed in the Books of HO. So at the all assets and liabilities of the branch are absorbed in the books of HO, as the branch has no legal separate entity. It was an accounting entity that was created for recording transaction during the year, and that accounting entity is not a separate legal entity. So branch is not a separate legal entity than head office. So all the assets and liabilities of the branch are absorbed. in the books of ho this is what is done in case of debtor system so at the beginning of the year the economic existence of branch is created by giving assets and liabilities at the end of the year the economic existence of the branch is absorbed in the books of head office by taking away all assets and liabilities of the branch and during the year whatever the transaction occurs they are to be recorded this is how branch accounting is done in case of debtor system now see now the purpose of accounting for branch is to find out the profit earned through branch activity how that how the profit is found out by recording all the transactions that are all the th- all the transactions that i have mentioned how the profit is found out that i want to demonstrate by uh for an in for a dependent branch Under debtor system. Now re- observe it. So at the beginning of the year, branch is created. Now accounting methods, accounting chart, accounting alternatives, classification from accounting point of view. There are two types of branches: dependent branch, independent branch. dependent branch means branch depends on head office for maintenance of the books of accounts branch is not following double entry bookkeeping for recording the transaction branch has to prepare only summary statements for the transaction that it has entered into so in case of dependent branch the accounting technique for branch no books of accounts are maintained by the branch accounting books of accounts are not maintained whatever the books are maintained for the purpose of accounting is a transaction summary statements are prepared by the branch so various transaction summaries are prepared in a statement form in a statement form by the branch and that's why it is known as dependent branch and this statement summary is considered as a voucher for the purpose of recording transaction in the books of head office now the head office has a option of recording this transaction in this way one It, the ho can record all this summarized transaction either by debtor system or by stock and debtor system or third is memoranda final accounts so these are the three ways by which this summary statement prepared by the branch 
is being recorded by head office in its books of accounts. But the purpose of recording is to find out the profit. That's the main purpose. Now, I want to talk about data system. So in data system, what is being done? The accounting entity branch is created at the beginning of the year by giving it, by giving it assets and liabilities. At the end of the accounting period, the economic, the economic accounting entity known as branch is absorbed in the books of head office by taking away its all assets and liabilities at the end of the year. And whatever the transaction occurs during the year that I have mentioned to you, they are to be recorded in branch account. Now, let me explain this data system. Before, before that, let me complete this classification. Independent branch, the accounting technique. In case of Hindi, in, it may be a local branch or a foreign branch. In this situation, books of branch are independent books and they are maintained by double entry bookkeeping principles. So all the double entry bookkeeping principles are followed by recording the transactions. So branch follows double entry bookkeeping principle for the purpose of recording transaction. Branch prepares its own trial balance. Branch prepares its own trading and profit and loss account. And at the end of the accounting period, head office absorbs this financial statement of branch. So in the books of HO, Absorption of the independent books maintained by the branch. So whatever the financial statements are prepared by branch are absorbed in the books of HO at the end of the accounting period. This is this method of accounting is known as independent branch. Independent branch doesn't mean that the branch manager has an independent authority to do whatsoever, whatever he wants to do. That is not the meaning of independent branch. Independent branch means independent books of accounts are maintained. Dependent branch means Independent books of accounts are not maintained, but only transaction summary is maintained by the branch. That is how the classification of dependent branch and independent branch is made. Now I want to focus on data system. While talking about data system, I am also going to the I am also going to mention the important points of distinction between data system in stock and data system. So my main focus is to explain you data system at the same time. I'll mention the distinguishing points between data system and stock and data system. Let me start now. Now, what are the transactions between HO and branch? At the beginning of the year, the branch accounting entity is created. During the year, there are transactions between HO and branch. At the end of the year, the branch existence is absorbed by HO. This is normal situation in case of data system. Now, at the beginning of the year, accounting entity branch is created. That is not done in stock and data system. At the end of the year, the accounting entity branch is absorbed by HO. That is not done in stock and data system. But in case of data system, the accounting entity is created by giving it assets and liabilities. The accounting entity is being absorbed by taking away at taking away assets and liabilities at the end of the year. Now, look at the transaction at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, transfer to branch, assets at the beginning, which assets are transferred? Stock, data, PT cash, etc. All these assets are assets balance, uh, assets are transferred to the branch. Liabilities are also given to the branch at the beginning of the year. Branch credits as outstanding expenses of the branch. All these liabilities are given to the branch at the beginning of the year. This is how branch comes into existence. Branch comes into existence as an economic entity because it holds economic value that is known as difference between assets and liabilities at the beginning of the year. Now, during the year, what happens? HO sends or pays. HO sends goods to the branch. HO sends assets to the branch. HO sends cash to the branch. Or HO pays for goods purchased by the branch. HO pays for assets purchased by the branch. HO pays for expenses. So this is what HO gives during the year. Value given by HO to the branch during the year. Now, 
HOP is expenses of the branch. Now transaction during the year. HO receives from branch goods from branch. Goods returned by the branch are received by HO. Asset from branch. If asset is returned by branch to HO, HO receives the asset. Cash from branch. Income from branch. This is what HO receives. The value received by HO during the year. Out of recording, these are the opening balance. These are the value given. This is the value withdrawn. At the end of the year, the outcome of this is known as closing balance. So all the assets and liabilities of the branch are absorbed at the end of the year. So all stack, stock, debtors, cash balance that is existed in the branch at the end of the year is taken away by HO because branch is not allowed to keep a separate entity other than HO at the end of the accounting period. Similarly, all the liabilities are taken. All the liabilities are taken by HO from the branch. So these are the transactions between HO and branch. On the basis of this transaction, profit is to be found out. Now for the purpose of finding out the profit from this transaction, we prepare one account known as branch account. The profit is found out by preparing branch account and the philosophy with which the profit is found out, that philosophy that you have studied in single entry capital comparison method. So, So these are the transactions between HO and branch. Now the question arises, are there any transaction between branch and the rest of the world? Let us understand those transactions also. So what are the transactions between branch and customers and sir brother and the persons other than HO? Let us understand that. So transaction of branch with debtors. Transaction of branch with creditors, transaction of branch with other persons. But all these persons are other than HO. So what are the transactions of branch with debtors? Goods are sold by branch either for cash or on credit to customers or debtors. Return of goods by debtors to the branch. Receipt of cash from customers either by way of cash sales or by collection from debtors. Discount allowed to customers. Writing of our bad debts. If customer doesn't pay, we may write off the bad debts. So these are the transactions between branch and debtors. Similarly, the transaction with creditors purchase of goods by branch either for cash or on credit. Return of goods to supplier. Payment to supplier. Or discount allowed by supplier. Now transaction, other transactions, purchase of assets by branch, other sundry receipts and branch just like bandit recovered, loss of cash or goods at branch and the insurance claim received, these are the transactions with other persons. So, how many transactions we have identified? At the beginning of the year, assets and liabilities are given. During the year, HO gives goods, asset or cash to the branch. During the year, HO receives from branch cash, goods or asset. At the end of the year, all assets and liabilities of the branch are taken by the HO. These are the transactions of branch with debtors. These are the transactions of branch with creditors. These are the transactions of branch with others. So, if you observe, all the transactions are bifurcated in seven categories. Four categories. At the beginning of the year, assets and liabilities are given. During the year, Value given by HO to branch. During the year, value received by HO from branch. At the end of the year, assets and liabilities are taken. Four categories. Transactions of branch with customer. Transactions of branch with creditor. Other transactions. So these are the seven categories. Now out of these seven categories. Let me repeat once again for your better understanding. At the beginning of the year, assets and liabilities are given. During the year, value given by HO to branch. During the year, value received by HO from branch. At the end of the year, assets and liabilities taken by HO from branch. These are the transactions between branch and debtors. These are the transactions between branch and creditors. These are the transactions between branch and others. 
out of the seven categories, only first four categories of the transactions are recorded under data or system. Which four categories? Assets and liabilities given at the beginning of the year, value given to the branch at the beginning of the year, value received from branch during the year, value given to the branch during the year, value received from the branch during the year, assets and liabilities taken from the branch at the end of the year. These are the four categories, four groups of transactions are recorded under data or system. Under stock and all these three categories of transaction, transactions of branch with debtors are not recorded under data system, transactions of branch with creditors are not recorded under data system, transactions of branch with other persons are not recorded under data system. Because head office is not a party to this transaction, head office is not a party to this transaction, this is a transaction between branch and creditors, it is not a transaction between branch and head office. This is a transaction of branch with others. These are, the, these are not the transaction between branch and head office. So all these categories of transactions are not going to be recorded in branch account that we prepare under data system. This is an important thing that one should understand. One more thing. Out of the seven categories, in stock and data system, all the three categories of transactions are recorded. In stock and data system, all the three categories of transactions are recorded in stock and data system. All these three categories of transactions are not recorded under data system. So in stock and data, they are recorded. Under data system, they are not recorded. That's an important difference that students should note. Students student should understand. Now talk about first four categories. At the beginning of the year, assets and liabilities are given to the branch. They are recorded under data system, but they are not recorded under stock and data system. During the year, value given to the branch is recorded under data system and is also recorded under stock and data system. Value received from branch during the year, it is recorded under data system and stock and data system. At the end of the year, assets and liabilities taken away by head office from the branch is a transaction recorded under data system but not recorded under stock and data system. So this is basically I wanted to make a difference between data system and stock and data system. That's why I have taken pains for all these things. Now let me focus on data system alone. So these are the one, two, three and four categories of transaction. All these four categories of transactions are recorded in data system. And the profit is found out by preparing branch account. Now in this situation, remember in data system, the profit is found out by the process. I like to capital comparison method that you have studied in single entry. How the profit was found out under capital comparison method? Capital comparison method in single entry where no books of accounts were maintained and the profit was found out by comparing capital at the beginning and end at the end of the year. And at that, at that time, for the purpose of finding out the profit, we have considered drawings and additional capital that, that were introduced or withdrawn during the year. So, under data system, the profit is found out exactly on the basis of same principle that you have studied in capital comparison method. In capital comparison method, the profit is found out losing capital, plus drawings, minus additional capital, minus opening capital. Now, this closing capital, assets and liabilities at the end of the accounting period, this is known as closing capital. So assets minus liabilities is known as net assets. This is the net assets at the end of the year that is known as closing capital of the branch. Net assets at the end of the year. Now drawings by head office. So HO has received cash from branch. All are known as drawings. So this is known as value received from branch. So closing net assets at branch, value received from branch during the year minus value given to the branch during the year minus opening net assets that is equal to closing capital, you can find out the profit. So branch account is prepared on the basis of this principle. Now, all these four categories of transactions are going to be recorded in branch account and the outcome of that recording is the profit. Now, how they are recorded and how the journal entries are recorded for that, 
that is that I want to consider in data system. Now, at the beginning of the year, assets and liabilities given to the branch. Here I have prepared the branch account in the books of HO. Branch is a separate accounting person to whom the assets are given. Branch is the receiver, debit the receiver, branch account debit to assets account credit. So here I am going to write down the journal entry. Here I am going to show you the ledger posting. At the beginning of the year, assets are transferred to the branch. Assets are given to the branch. This is a notional giving entry. So assets are given to the branch, branch account debit, branch is the receiver. For branch assets, branch account is to be debited to branch assets account credit. Now which assets are given to the branch? They are recorded as opening balance in the branch account. And similarly branch liabilities are given to the branch. So when the liability is given to a person, remember when the liability is given to a person, person is not receiver but the person is giver. So person account is to be credited. Remember one important thing, when the asset is given to a person, person is receiver. But when the liability is given to a person, person is a giver, not receiver. So here the liabilities are given. So entry for that branch liabilities account, debit to branch account credit. Now let me go for the posting. At the beginning of this, stock is given. Branch account debit to stock account. At the beginning of the year, debtors are given. Opening balance of debtors. Branch account debit to debtors account. At the beginning of the year, prepaid expenses are also in a debit balance asset, branch account debit to prepaid expense account. At the beginning of the year, PT cash or cash balance is given, branch account debit to PT cash or cash account. At the beginning of the year, the furniture or any, any some such asset is given, branch account debit to fixed assets account credit. So branch account debit to stock account, branch account debit to retail account, branch account debit to prepaid expense account, branch account debit to cash account, branch account debit to fixed assets account. This is how entry gets recorded. Now for liabilities. When the liabilities are given to the branch, branch is not the receiver, branch is given because branch is to pay obligation of the head office. So liabilities will be recorded in the credit side, which are outstanding expenses, creditors. So how the entries are recorded? Outstanding expense account debit, creditors account debit to branch account credit. So this assets minus liabilities is the opening capital. So opening capital or Net value, net worth, net assets at the beginning of the year is the difference between the two. Now, during the year, goods given to the branch, branch is the receiver, debit the receiver, branch account, debit to goods sent to branch account. Asset given to the branch, branch is the receiver, debit the receiver, branch account, debit to asset account, furniture account, credit. Cash given to the branch, branch account debit to cash account or expense of the branch is paid by me. Branch is the receiver of the benefit. So branch account debit to cash account credit. So branch account debit to goods sent to branch account, branch account debit to asset account credit. Cash given to branch, branch account debit to cash account or even if the expense is paid, branch account debit to cash account. So these are the entries recorded for this Value given to the branch, branch is the receiver, debit the receiver, branch account debit, goods sent to branch account credit, for asset given asset account credit, for cash given cash account credit, for expenses paid also cash account credit. So let me write on the debit side. Branch account debit to goods sent to branch, cash account, asset account. This is how posting is being made. Now, two blocks of transactions are over. Now let me transfer this branch account to this side. Now here HO receives, branch gives HO receives, from the books of HO it is to be recorded, branch is the giver, credit the giver, branch account is to be credited for these things. So goods received from branch, entries goods sent to branch account debit to branch account credit, because when the goods were sent, goods sent account, goods sent to branch account was debited, so when the re return of goods occurs, Goods sent to branch account is to be recorded. So goods sent to branch account, debit to branch account. Now asset is received, asset account debit to branch account. Cash is received, cash account debit to branch account. Income is received, cash account debit to branch account. So this is how branch account is to be credited for all these things. Value received. So goods sent to branch for goods returned by branch 
or its customer directly to HO is to be recorded here. Remember, cash received from branch cash account debit to branch account credit. Now, remitted by customer directly, remitted by customers of the branch directly to HO is also recorded here because if the direct remittance is done by customer directly to HO, then it is presumed to have been remittance made by the branch. So, cash account debit to branch account is to be credited for that. Now, at the end of the year, all the assets are taken away from the branch. So, branch assets account debit to branch account credit. And liabilities are taken for that branch account is to be debited and liabilities account to be, is to be credited. When we take the liability of anybody, the person is receiver. So, branch account is to be debited. So, at the end of the year, the closing stock at the branch is taken, closing stock account, stock at branch account debit or stock account debit to branch account credit, debtors account debit to branch account, prepaid expense account debit to branch account, petty cash balance account debit to branch account, furniture account debit or fixed assets account debit to branch account. And for liabilities, so difference between the two is known as closing capital. Closing capital is recorded here because assets are more than liabilities. So closing capital, this is the value received. So they are known as drawings. So closing capital, the drawings are added from opening capital and the additional capital is deducted. So the difference of this branch account is known as profit. Now, total of credit minus total of debit. This is a profit that has occurred. So branch account debit to profit and loss account credit is the entry for that branch account debit to profit and loss account credit. This is how under data system, Branch account is prepared and profit is found out. Now, this is the information that we require for the purpose of preparing branch account. Now, the most important point that I want to tell you is in stock and data system, these transactions are recorded and these transactions are recorded. The assets and liabilities at the beginning of the year, assets and liabilities at the end of the year are not recorded in this fashion in stock and data system. Remember it. Now, I want to talk about this other transaction. The transactions of branch with customers are not recorded in data system. All these transactions of branch with debtors are not recorded under data system. The following transactions affected by branch will not be recorded in branch account as the HO is not a party to this transaction. And as the profit is found out by capital comparison method, where in bearing, we do not record the transaction for purchase, sales, expenses, income during the year. So these are recorded in working note for debtors to find out the missing transaction. So this information is useful for the purpose of preparing branch account when in the branch account, opening balance of debtor is missing, closing balance of debtor is missing, cash receipt from debtor is missing. So to find out the missing term, missing value, which is required for the purpose of preparing branch account. So we shall prepare a working note wherein debtor's account will be prepared under debtor system and the missing information will be found out and that missing information will be, will be incorporated in the branch account that we prepare and by preparing branch account, we can find out the profit. Same with this transaction. There are the transactions of branch with creditors. The following transactions affected by branch will not be recorded in branch account as HO is not a party to this transaction and as the profit is found out by capital comparison method wherein we do not record the transactions of purchase, sales, expenses and income during the year. So these are recorded in working note for creditors to find out the missing transaction. So if you are required to prepare in a working note creditors account, we may prepare the creditors account to find out the missing information that is opening balance of creditors that we are required to record to the credit side of branch account, closing balance of creditors that we are required to record to the debit side of branch account to find out such missing information, we may prepare creditors account as a working note. That's an important point. Similarly, all these transactions with are also not recorded in branch account that we prepare because we find out the profit by which method? By the method of capital comparison method. So all these three categories of transactions are not recorded in branch account 
are ne not recorded in the books of HO when it prepares branch account under debtor system because these are the transactions of branch with the rest of the world other than HO. That's an important understanding. Now remember, in stock and data system, these transactions are going to be recorded. In stock and data system, these transactions are going to be recorded. In stock and data system, these transactions are going to be recorded. Because in stock and data system, the recording is done by the double entry bookkeeping method that is known as conversion method of single entry, wherein all the transactions or branch are recorded in the books of head office as if all the transactions are entered into by head office. Listen once again. In stock and data system, all these transactions are recorded in the books of head office. All the transactions of the branch are assumed, are recorded in the head office as if all those transactions are entered into by head office through branch. Branch is an agent. So in stock and data system, these three groups of transactions are recorded. In stock and data system, at the beginning of the year, assets and liabilities are given is not recorded. In stock and data system, assets and liabilities taken away from the branch is not recorded. Instead of that, the opening balance of assets and liabilities will be carried forward in the books of HO as is branch assets and branch liabilities and closing balance of branch assets and branch liabilities will be carried forward in the books of HO and for the purpose of reporting purpose, the assets of HO and branch will be merged and reported in the financial statement. This is how Similarly, expenses are merged, similarly, incomes are merged, similarly, debtors balance is merged. And this is how in stock and debtor system, all the transactions of branch are recorded. All these transactions are recorded. Value given to the branch during the year are also recorded. Value taken from the branch are also recorded in stock and debtor system. This is the difference between debtor system and stock and debtor system. My main purpose was to explain the debtor system and just to show you the point of difference between data system and stock and data system. I have tried to explain you theory, but you will understand all these things once again when I will talk about this theory while solving the sums here before you. So, you have followed all these things. I feel that you have followed all these things thanks to all of you.